In this video, you will learn the proper procedure to do a pre-trip inspection on a tractor-trailer combination. To ensure the vehicle is safe to drive and all equipment is functioning correctly. So first thing you're going to do is make sure your hood latches are undone so that way you can lift open the front of the hood to check all the fluids and stuff like that on the truck. So usually you can start on one side. Over here on this side, it's really just the power steering reservoir. But while you're here on this side, you're going to go ahead and check the level of the fluid, unscrewing the cap and pulling it. There'll be a add line and a full line to it. And we're within range. But while you're doing that, you're also going to be looking to see if you can see any kind of leaks, whether it be from the hoses. And then while you're on this side, you're going to also be looking to look at your air compressor. Make sure your belts are there, your fans are right here. You're going to make sure the shroud's intact. None of the fins are broken on it. You're just looking for anything obvious that may either be leaking or broken. Then the same thing with the power steering. Here's your gearbox right here. You're going to check your arm right here. You're going to see that there's no, it's not loose. The cotter pin's in place. There's no bolts missing. The arm extends back to here. You've got your cotter pin in place. Everything looks to be complete. So on this side of the truck for here, we have the alternator right here. So you're going to check and make sure that the alternator belt is snug. You don't have any broken or frayed wires on the system. You've got your oil dipstick right here. You're gonna go ahead and pull it and wipe it and reinsert it and double check it again. Make sure you're within range, which I know we are. Full marks right here. You have an ad line down farther. And then while you're over here on this side, this is your coolant reservoir right here. You have your sight glass right here. If you cannot see any coolant inside the sight glass, you can go ahead and pop the top off and then verify inside that you do see coolant in there. And then your windshield wiper reservoir is right here. It's got fluid in it, it's good to go. We're now gonna enter the cab of the semi truck. Make sure that when you go to climb in the semi truck that you have three points of contact to get into it. So the first thing you're going to check is to make sure that you're a neutral on the truck. Then you're going to go ahead and push the clutch down and start the truck. So the first thing you're going to do after you've got the truck running is you're going to verify on all your gauges on the dash. You've got your oil pressure gauge right here, you've got your water temperature gauge up here. Your volt meter is down here. You've got your air tank gauges right here. And they're reading properly. You've got your fuel gauge. It's a temperature gauge for the one of the rear ends. But everything seems to be operational as far as that goes. So then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna look at your windshield. Do you have any cracks in the windshield or chips that are in your line of sight or view. The other thing you're going to do while you're inside inside the cab is look at all your mirrors and make sure that they're all adjusted properly so that way you can see all angles from inside the truck. So then you're going to go ahead and you're going to check and verify that your windshield wipers are operating correctly. Which they are and then you can use the spray verifying that that works. So the other thing that you're going to check while you're inside the cab is to make sure your dash instruments for turn signals, headlights, etc. are all in working order. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to turn left and you can see that it's working. So then you're going to go ahead and go right. It's working. And then you're going to pull the handle out and do four ways. Verify that it's working. 
And then you can go ahead and turn on your lights, which we will see when we get outside the truck that they're on. But then you're gonna hit your high low beams to make sure that your high beam indicator light is coming on on the dash as well. So the other thing that you're gonna check is to make sure that you know where your fire extinguishers are located. This truck happens to have two of them, one inside the cab and one outside of the cab underneath the sleeper. The one inside the cab is right here. You wanna make sure that it's <clears throat> secured and not loose to be able to fly around inside the cab when you're driving down the road. Another thing you're gonna look at the fire extinguisher is, is if it's still got a charge to it within the green zone and make sure that your current tag on it is good to go for what it's rated for. The other thing you're gonna have to know is to make sure you know where your fuse panel is located. On this truck, it happens to be down here. And then you always wanna make sure that you have a couple of different boxes of fuses. The last thing you'll also want to verify and check is to make sure that you have your emergency triangles. Um, the ones for this truck are underneath the sleeper, um, not inside the cab, which we can verify when we get out and check it. So the emergency triangles that happen to be right here, you need to make sure that they're not broken, they're clean, and I have three of them inside the box. So now we're gonna go ahead and walk around the semi truck with the lights on and the four way flashers on to make sure that all the lights are in working order. You've got the side mounted ones. You've got your turn signal one down here. You can see that the headlights are on. The turn signals are working. Then you're gonna come back here to the back of the truck. make sure that your tail lights on the truck are working and that you have your four-way flashers on it. Next thing you're gonna check while you're outside the truck is anything that is strapped to the frame or anything like that, you're gonna make sure that it's not loose, that the straps are nice and tight. This is the battery box. You're gonna make sure it's mounted and secured and not gonna come off. While you're doing that, you're also going to be looking along the frame. You're going to be checking to see if there's anything, whether there's any cracks in the frame or if there's any bolts that are missing. You've got your catwalk up here. You're going to make sure that the catwalk is mounted and secured and not moving around. Next thing you're going to do, you're going to look down here. You've got your drive lines and stuff. You're going to make sure that Everything's there, the carry bearing is intact. You don't have any cracks in the drive line. And while you're down here, you're gonna be checking your brake cans. You're gonna make sure that they have the rubber plug in them. And while you're down here, you're also gonna be looking at your springs, making sure that they're not bent, cracked, or damaged. And you're gonna check your four airbags and your shocks and make sure that they're not torn or they don't have any cracks or strings hanging off of them. You're gonna verify your other brake cans are in good working order, your slack adjusters, that you have all your pins and rods in them, and that they're secure. While you're back here, you're gonna make sure you have both, you have both your mud flaps, you've got the reflect, re reflective material on them, at this point, we're ready to hook up the tractor to the trailer, but while we're up here, you're gonna verify and make sure that you don't have any cuts, frays, or broken wires on your electrical and or broken air, air lines that go from the truck to the trailer. You're gonna make sure that your glad hand seals are in good condition. They're not frayed, cracked, torn, parts of it missing. So now we're ready to back the truck up to the trailer, but there's a couple of things that you're gonna check before you do that. You're gonna make sure that your pin is pulled out and verify that your jaws are open on the fifth wheel plate. You're gonna look at it and make sure that the fifth wheel plate has grease on it. And then you're gonna look down here below the trailer and you're gonna check and make sure that the plate is in good condition and that your kingpin is not bent. 
So the next part you're gonna do is you're gonna back the truck up into the trailer. I'm gonna make sure that you're straight, that you can see both sides of the truck with the mirrors and back slowly up underneath the trailer. And then set your brakes and you can get out and verify that the jaws locked in around the kingpin. You're going to see from right here that your pin's in now, but you're still going to want to double check and verify by getting underneath right here. And you can look up in there and make sure that the jaws are actually locked around the kingpin. So the next step you're gonna do is you're gonna take your electrical cord for your lights to the trailer and hook it up. Make sure it's locked in. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go to your airlines. While doing so, you're going to double check and verify that your gland head and seals are good. The same thing for on the trailer. And then go ahead and make sure that they're locked into place. Now we're ready to go ahead and raise the landing gear. While you're doing so, you're going to make sure that all your landing gear is intact and anything attaching it to the trailer, that you're not missing any bolts and that it's straight, nothing's damaged. You want to make sure your landing gear is all the way up. Once you can verify that, then you take the arm and you lock it down into place. Make sure it's nice and secure. Now that we know that the tractor is connected to the trailer, we're gonna go ahead and do our trailer inspection. This will include multiple items, but first, as you're walking around, you're gonna make sure that all your lights are currently on and in working order. But as you're going down, you're gonna check that your buckles are secure and that you're not missing any bolts. You're gonna be looking underneath the trailer and the cross members to make sure that there's no cracks in the frame at all, that your chains are secured and not gonna come loose. You're also gonna make sure that your box, boxes that you have on the trailer are mounted and that the doors are locked or closed. You've got your mud flaps are intact. You're not missing any. You know, as you're coming along back here, you're gonna still make sure that your lights are working. The four-way flashes are currently on. But you don't have any loose or torn mud flaps. Your boxes are still good. Everything looks to be good. Now we're gonna go ahead and test the brakes on the trailer. So we're gonna go ahead and pull in the tractor plunger and we're gonna go ahead and put it in low gear and give it a test tug and see, make sure that the trailer doesn't go with the truck anywhere. Which it passed, so you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna pull the brake back out, but now we're gonna test the tractor brakes. So we're gonna go ahead and release the air out of the trailer brakes and then go ahead and put it back in gear. And you go ahead and try and tug test the truck and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And everything seems to be good. So now we're gonna check the air system and make sure that the emergency indicator lights pop on when they're supposed to. First step you're gonna go ahead and do is you're gonna go ahead 
and release the brakes and wait a few, uh, wait a minute. So now that both the brakes are pulled in, you're gonna go ahead and start bleeding down the air in the system. You're gonna do that by pumping the brakes. First thing you're gonna look for is your warning light indicator. It's usually pop, it popped on at 65 PSI. It's your low air warning. You're gonna go ahead and you're gonna keep pumping it. And right around 30, 30 to 35 PSI, the plunger should be pulling, pulling out. Everything checked out. So now that, that portion of the test is done, we're gonna go ahead and restart the truck. And we're going to check to make sure that the air compressor and the system will continuously build air up to 120 PSI when it's supposed to cut out within a two minute range. So you wanna go ahead and you want to be able to bring your RPMs up to around 1100 RPMs. And then you're just gonna sit here and you're gonna watch your gauges and watch it build pressure. The air tank is building air pressure. You're gonna make sure your low air alarm goes back out at around 65 PSI. All right, so now the warning air light went ahead and went out at around 65 PSI, and you're just gonna continue watching the gauges and making sure that both the tanks are filling up with air pressure until the air compressor reaches its cutout limit, which is 120 PSI. So as the air gauges continuously build pressure, you should be able to hear the air compressor and air dryer go off and cut out and it will be up to operating air pressure and there it goes so that portion is complete the final step you're going to do before you drive down the road with the semi truck is you're going to check all the tires you're gonna check, make sure you're not missing any lug nuts. These ones have cap covers, but obviously if a lug nut's missing, the cap cover is not gonna be there. You're gonna check for odd even tire wear. You can see that the steer tires have air in them. And make sure that you don't have any cracks or noticeable cracks or anything like that in the rims. So the one way to also check and verify that your tires are properly inflated, you can do it. There's two methods that you can do it. One is you're gonna use your bar as a thumper. If it sounds funny, then you go ahead and you grab the air chuck gauge and actually check the air in the tires to make sure. But I usually just walk around and I'll thump the tires. Usually the bar won't kick back. If you come across a tire that doesn't have a lot of air in it, the tire won't you know, the bar won't go ahead and kick back on you. It'll just kind of go a thud. we are gonna do that with the truck and the trailer. And you're also checking to make sure that you have all your lug nuts are secured and not loose on the rims either as you're thumping the tires. The other thing too, another thing too, is if you wanna check and make sure that your hubs have fluid in them, there's a fill and a full mark on it. You're gonna be checking for tread depth, and make sure that you're within range. On the drive tires and trailer tires, it's 230 seconds. For your steers, it's 430 seconds of tread depth. Everything looks good. All right, now that our pre-trip inspection is complete between the tractor and the trailer, we can all go ahead and get this thing going down the road.